Hi, this is Bree from Atlas Aphasia Center. One question that I get a lot from family and friends and caregivers of people with aphasia is what can I do to help? How can I be practicing? What should we do at home? What can I do? And so today I'm here to give you some ideas of activities that you can do with your loved one with aphasia. And how I'm going to do it is I'm going to start at sort of the lowest level, someone that has very severe aphasia, um, start with the activity for them and kind of like make it harder in little half steps. Um, and hopefully we'll work up to a level that's appropriate for your loved one. And if you're not sure where to start, you can always start with sort of the easiest activity. And then if they do it really fast and really easy, it's no big deal, great. Move up a little half step, make it a little bit harder. Um, and then just kind of keep going from there um, until you're challenging them appropriately. And so to get started, someone with really severe aphasia, um, really, you know, a lot of times this is what I do with someone with global aphasia. That's someone that's having trouble getting out any words, they're having trouble understanding, they're usually really frustrated. Um, I'm gonna start with the level that's most appropriate for them. And what you need is a bunch of pairs of items. So two things that are the same. And you can look around your house or the dollar store. Um, you will just come up with items that are the same. And what's good to know is that the easiest possible level, right, for someone with really severe aphasia um, would be to have the objects look exactly the same, right? So the same size, the same color, the same brand, they're exactly alike. And the reason that's easier is because it's like you don't have to do quite as much of a cognitive leap, right? This is a comb. This is also a comb. They look the same. It's kind of like easy. Right? To make it just a little half step harder, you could use objects that are the same item, but they look different. Right? So this is a comb, this is also a comb, but your brain has to do just a little bit more work to kind of like pair up these items. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and gather my supplies and then I'll show you what to do. All right, so this first task is non-linguistic, meaning there is no language involved. So it's really the best for people with severe aphasia that are having a lot of difficulty with language tasks. And people with global aphasia or really severe aphasia are often super frustrated. And a task like this can help kind of build success and give them some confidence to keep going. And then you can keep making it harder in little half steps from here. So again, this is the easiest possible task that I'm showing you today. You have all of these doubles and you sort of scatter them on the table in front of you and then you ask your loved one to find the match. So they match the objects, they find the pairs, they put them together. Done. All right, I'm also going to show you a version where I use those same paired objects but they look slightly different from each other. And then we'll just keep on building from there. All right, so now you're making it just a little bit harder by making those objects look different from each other. And this is honestly where a lot of people might start this task and you'll still just do the same thing. You're gonna have them find the pairs and match them up. You can always increase difficulty by having more objects on the table. And this can be especially helpful if the person with aphasia has any sort of visual deficits because it gives them practice with visual scanning and making sure that they're seeing everything that's in front of them. And if this task is going well and things are pretty easy for them, you can start to introduce some language if you want. All right, so what you're gonna do now is clear all of the objects out of view and just take one pair of items at a time. And the reason for that is that we want the person with aphasia, you know, concentrating on that one object and that one word and really building that connection. And we don't want like a bunch of other stuff out kind of interfering and getting in their brain, right? So clear it all out of view, get one pair of objects. And what I would do is I would hold one of them and then I would offer the other object for that person to hold. And as you guys are both holding these things, you say the word cup and you wait for them to repeat. Um, be patient, give them extra time if they need it. And a note about having them hold it, it's not super necessary. I kind of like to offer it to them. I like to incorporate as much of your senses as you can. Right, so you're touching the object, you're seeing the person say it, you're also getting it out of your mouth. You're kind of like building these connections again. Um, so I like to do that, but you don't have to. Um, the big thing here is that you say the word, you have them repeat. And 
don't like quiz them yet. I know you guys are going to want to get ahead of me on this and be like, what is this? And like, wait for them to say the word, but I wouldn't go there yet. I would say the word and have them repeat, right? Um, the speech therapist can do that in their sessions because they'll know how to help your loved one get that word out if they get stuck. And we want extra practice at home to be like relaxed and low key and not frustrating. Um, that's another point. If the word is not coming out, that's okay, right? It's okay. You don't want to push it because you don't want that person to practice the wrong word, right? If they're not getting it out quite right, but they're building that connection, we don't want their brain to remember the wrong thing. And then, of course, we don't want them to get frustrated either. Um, and so uh, it's worth noting that sometimes like a word with fewer letters that's shorter, like cup, that might come out easier than like a longer word with lots of consonant clusters and blends. So something like paintbrush, this might be harder. And that's okay, if the words aren't coming out, you just tell them, hey, that's okay, we'll keep working on it, let's try the next one. All right, the next phase brings in a little bit of reading. So you'll only need one of each of the objects that you're practicing, and then you'll need some note cards or some paper, and you'll write each of the objects onto a note card. All right, here we go. Okay, so you have one of each item and you have all of the names of the objects written on note cards. You give the note cards to the person with aphasia and have them match the written word with the object. If they get one wrong, try not to say something right away. They might be able to fix it themselves. And if they're not sure about one of them, have them put it at the back of the stack and try again later. Aphasia is kind of tricky because it affects everyone so differently. But if reading is difficult for your loved one, this is a great low pressure way to get started with that. Again, it's all about rebuilding connections. And if they do have one wrong at the end, point out which ones need to be fixed and let them try again. All right, the next activity is going to incorporate a little bit of writing. And aphasia is tricky because it affects everyone differently. And I don't know you or your loved one. Um, I'm just here with ideas. So you've got to gauge your loved one's reaction. You know, maybe they've been doing these things and they're all super easy and they're ready for the next step. Or maybe they're still getting frustrated or they're just not that into it, right? So maybe stop doing these activities or at the very least, like go a step lower to kind of um, have them not be so frustrated, right? Use your best judgment and keep in mind that sometimes friends and family like to push people with aphasia more than they want to be pushed. So make sure that you're listening to them and you're doing what they want to do. If you're all on the same page and you're ready for the next activity, um, you'll still be using those same objects and note cards, and then you'll need a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. I would say most people with aphasia like a pencil because you can erase. Um, another really good option is to use like a little dry erase board, um, especially if they're having to write with their left hand, which is their non-dominant hand, if they've had to switch over. Um, because a thicker dry erase marker, you don't need as fine of motor control as you would with like a thinner pen or pencil. Um, so keep that in mind. So we've got our objects and our note cards and we've got a writing utensil and something to write on. Um, let's go ahead and do the next activity. All right, on to the next step. You can start working on writing. So what you'll do is give them one object and the written name and you just have them copy. Right, and that's a good starting place. You have them copy and make sure that it looks the same. And again, I know a lot of people with aphasia end up having hemiplegia. So if they can't use their right hand, have them try with their left. And those thicker dry erase markers do tend to be easier when you're just starting off learning to write with your left hand. Um, and it might not look as pretty, but it's great if they can try and they'll get better and better as they keep practicing. Of note, it is very normal for the longer words to be harder, even if the person's just copying. 
So make sure that all of the letters are there, have them double check their work, um, and if they can't figure out which letter or letters they're missing, you can point it out to them and have them stick it in there. All right, if copying the words has gotten easy and you're ready for the next step, I'll show you a few more things you can do. And again, I'm gonna kind of show you in these little half steps, um, the very, like just a little bit harder task. Um, and I use this especially for people where writing is a challenge or, you know, spelling is something that's really intimidating to them. It's really tricky. Um, there's kind of like another little level where you can sort of help them out. And the way I do this is that I use Bananagrams tiles. So I have bought a Bananagrams game and I got a little bit extra here. I labeled all of my letters so they're easy to find. Um, I do this a lot. <laughs> you don't have to um, do any of this stuff. You just need the tiles. And I do tend to like the Bananagrams tiles better than Scrabble tiles because they don't have the little number at the bottom. They don't have the point value. And to me, that's kind of less distracting. It's like you're just looking at the letters of the word. So I do recommend Bananagrams tiles. Um, but you will get those ready and I can show you what to do with them next. So I still like to start with the object and the written word. Again, you are constantly trying to strengthen that connection, this object to this word. And then I would go to my Bananagrams tiles and I would take one of each of the letters of the word. And I would have them in my hand and I like to shake them up to make sure all the letters are scrambled. So you can make sure that the letters are all right side up and facing the right way. You're not asking them to figure out like the letter orientation or anything like that. So you get the tiles in front of the person and you take away the note card and you have them try to unscramble the letters to spell the word. They might remember it starts like this and I think this one's maybe next and they know this is at the end. At any point, if they get stuck, you can kind of help them. You can say, this one's next, go ahead and put it there. You might tell them these two always go together. That one's next. And if you wanna add one more piece to this, after the letters are unscrambled correctly, you can have them write the word again. After a while, you can show them the object and show them the word. Have them kind of study it for a second. Again, they're trying to sort of build those connections between the two. And then what you'll do is you'll cover up the word or you'll take it out of view. And then you still want the person to try to write the name of that object. Again, longer words tend to be harder. You have them study the word and then you take it away. It's very normal to get out the beginning of the word and then get stuck. That's really common. So one thing that you can do is say, nice job getting that word started. There's a few more letters and you'll put blanks where the next letter should be. And at that point, you might ask them if they can remember how the word ends. Sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. Um, a lot of times people will have the most trouble with the middle, but have them get out as many letters as they can. And at that point, you can just bring the card back and let them study it and fill in those missing letters, and then just keep on practicing. All right, I hope you guys learned some things today about what you might be able to do with your loved one to help with their aphasia at home, to help them practice. And again, I showed you sort of like in this stair-step fashion, right? I started with the easiest task for someone with really severe aphasia, and then we sort of kept adding elements to it to make it harder, more challenging. Um, anytime you can, I would strongly suggest having the objects and working on talking and reading and writing, um, all of those different language domains. And the beauty of this task or these activities is that you can use whatever objects you want, right? I just kind of used whatever I found laying around, but you can tailor this to the person with aphasia. 
right? So maybe somebody with really severe deficits, um, if they wear glasses, right? Glasses might be a very important word for them to be able to say and read and spell. Or maybe they drink coffee out of the same mug every morning. Go get that mug and bring it into this activity, right? Or somebody that has a pet, you could use items like a leash and a collar and dog food. Or if someone likes gardening, you could use objects like a pair of gloves and a spade and a packet of seeds. Um, if somebody's handy, bring out the toolbox. Now that's all of your objects. They're going to be screws and hammers and nails, right? So you can make it interesting to that person um, and just a lot more helpful to their daily life if you use their interests and their hobbies and things that they want to be able to say. Um, my last note is that um, keep an eye on your loved one and see if they want to be doing this, right? Again, I think I mentioned before, sometimes we really want to help, but maybe that person with aphasia just needs to rest. So um, if they're not getting out a lot of words, kind of read their body language. Um, obviously, if they tell you to stop, please stop doing this stuff. Um, but really listen to them and see how you can best help. Um, I would love to make more videos like this if you found this interesting. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to help. All right, guys, see you next time. Atlas Aphasia Center is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. If these videos are helpful to you and you're able, please consider making a donation so that we can continue to make free resources like this.